um, so yeah, this is him here. Hi, this is Robert. You left a note on my door. And I'm looking like, what? Hello, I was checking to see if you were able to do anything to stop the upcoming auction. You do have options to prevent the sale. That's what I give him as an opening spiel. I need to say that is an automatic thing to send people. He say, I stopped it. So there you go, line again. I stopped <laughs> it. Are you a buyer or just someone telling me? Because remember, I said I was a neighbor. He said it was scheduled for the 17th, but I have someone else interested in buying it. So they were able to stop the process. I don't think they really stopped it, to be honest. I said, I am a cash buyer. If something mm-hmm. happens and they, and they perform, I'm supposed to say don't perform for any reason let me know if you have any questions let me uh i can help then he said they're auction off the 17th i will sell before that i don't know what makes him think that he already told me that they stopped so you know he's wrong about that then he's like what's your price i said i'm sure it's better than the other offer will you be around <laughs> this weekend you know i'm gonna keep asking questions not at the property but if you are more than welcome to take pictures of the location. Look around. The sewer line needs love. Just give me an offer. And I said, I will call you in five minutes. Are you available? He never responded. And I said, do you have interior pictures? He never responded. But I do have his number now. And it's the dude that I did talk to. So should we give him a live call right now? Yep. Robert, what'd you do about the house? He's going to be like, who is this? It's me, the OG. These live calls is where I really learned the most for real. Hi, this is Robert. Hey, Robert, how are you today? Are you good yourself? Good, good. You were texting me about the house. I was uh, just trying to follow up with you. Uh, did you get the guy to stop the uh, sale already? No, unfortunately, uh, he uh, backed out. Um, he came in through uh, with a rotor router company and a, uh, a a contractor, and he said that there's a lot of roots in the uh, uh, the sewer system, and that uh, he wouldn't be able to buy it. So he wasn't able to start to stop it. Um, I was going to get a hold of you tomorrow, being a business day as opposed to uh, today, but. Um, I have a few people I got to contact, but as of now, the house is still going up for auction on the 17th. Okay. Um, so I think we need to get some paperwork in quickly to get that auction stopped. Definitely. Um, and so, uh, how much did you still owe on it? Um, with my, uh, I had two loans. I went through a St. John's bank uh, out here in St. Peter's. And that was uh, the rest of it was about forty five hundred, um, a little a little under uh, forty six, like forty five is the same. Um, but the uh, uh, loan, the second loan that was on the house was uh, through an M and T bank, and um, when I was told that was about um, forty two thousand, so all together around forty six, forty seven thousand. That I left the O on the actual house. Now, which one of these banks is the one that's actually foreclosing? Well, I understand it is the uh, MNC Bank uh, because that is the one with the greatest debt. Uh, the St. John's Bank I actually have uh, continuous contact with, but the MNC Bank is more of an online bank. They don't have a, uh, a brick and mortar uh, establishment. Um, the person that I sent out, uh, who I had mentioned to you, uh, I was under the pressure with the representative because he came in uh, saying that, you know, he, he, he worked for MNC, that he's looking at the house, making sure he's doing a house check to make sure it's occupied, stuff like that. And that uh, told me that um, it, it's in uh, threat of going into foreclosure. Um, and so a couple of, uh, about a month and a half ago, I started going to negotiate with him. He uh, looked at the house sent pictures about potential buyers. Um, I was under the impression that he was buying it, but um, now that everything's come out, he backed out. I had a conversation with him, and he's telling me exactly what he was doing. So um, in the end, it was kind of shady. Um, I just, again, being kind of new at this, inheriting the property, um, I really didn't know what to expect. And, you know, with, yeah. with everything that went with him, it looked pretty uh, straightforward, but well either way robert guess what i'm gonna help you out i'm gonna try to do what i can to get this resolved and 
prevent this sale from happening? No. In that case, uh, I can sit there and, and help you out. And, you know, honestly, I'd rather get something than nothing. So I'm willing uh, to negotiate price. I know the house does need a lot of uh, remodeling and updating. Uh, that's not an issue. Uh, I've contacted other people as well, and then we'll continue to do so tomorrow. But um, as soon as we get something looked at, you can give me an estimate uh, of what you're willing to sit there and pay. Um, as opposed to like what needs to be done in the house and then whatever needs to be done just to just stop the uh, hey, auction. But uh, I mean, from there on, I mean, we can, sit there and we can definitely negotiate just again so I can get something rather than nothing. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And so with that MMC bank, have you been in contact with them at all? Like with their loss mitigation department or anything like that? Uh, I have not. Uh, I actually have an email address that I'm supposed to be getting something through, and I haven't received an email from the purpose. And uh, I recently have just been getting junk mail. I haven't received any anything from St. John's. I haven't received anything from MMC, Electric Bill, anything like that. So I don't know exactly what's going on with the mail carrier system. I'll have to contact them tomorrow as well. But for the most part, I'm starting to get under the impression that maybe because of what's going on in the foreclosure, maybe they had uh, stopped the mailing system or, or stopped the address from receiving mail. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how that works again. Yeah, it gets tricky. So it just depends on, you know, who's dealing with it at the bank. So you said you inherited this property. Is this loan in somebody else's name or the loan is in your name? Um, I, before the person had passed away, um, he wanted to do a, uh, a, an exchange of deeds, like put my name on the, the deed as well. And so while my name on the, was on the deed, I also inherited, I had to sit there and sign paperwork to be responsible for the, well, my name is on the loan. Okay, so they put... Okay, so they are allowing you to speak to the lender, get information, things like that if needed. Is that what I'm hearing? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually have uh, contact with the uh, St. John's Bank. The m and Bank, though, the account number is it, it's somewhere in the paperwork, and I have to find it. But um, I, I haven't, again, I haven't received mail from them to receive uh, a current debt or anything like that. I have actually had to uh, call them and give give the property information and stuff like that in order to get uh, an estimate. Right. But last time I checked at that, that was about, like I said, like 42. So everything in general is about 40, 46, 47,000, no, no more. Now, what is it that you need, Robert, to help you be able to move along and, uh, you know, not be stressed out about this? Uh, to get rid of the property would be the the, the final, the way I'd like to go um, to get out of, you know, some underneath that. Uh, my thing is, is what, Gauntlet, the person again, I had mentioned that I was talking to uh, the person who was, you know, I, I kind of went through this already with the contractor and everything else, check out the roof. Um, what he was telling me was that in order to stop the uh, auction, they would have to put front, like they'd have to put money towards it or something like that. And I wasn't quite sure on that. That isn't, I don't know if that makes sense to you. Yeah, that's the business. But. Yeah, that doesn't really work that way. What did they tell you the uh, as far as arrears? Like, say, if you wanted to catch up the loan and bring it current, how much would that be? Um, bring it current uh, because I am a few months back. I lost my job back in February, and I've been um, sending a little bit of money that way. It was something towards like what I was, you know, like I was making an effort uh, with little means I could. Uh, it wasn't anything towards what I would owe. Um, but honestly, I would say the monthly payment on the M and C bank was about like 125, 126. That's why there was so much more owed to them. Whereas the uh, payment to uh, St. John's was about 934, 938. That also includes like homeowners insurance and stuff like that as well. So altogether, it was a little over uh, 1100. Um, Probably 11, 18, 11, 20. So that's just one month though, correct? Or how much would it be yeah. like to bring it current? Well, in order to sit there and pay off the uh, St. John's, that would just be 45. And that's just what they're looking for, just to pay that off. Um, but uh, with the m and Bank, I would say it's probably gonna be close to uh, to 2,000 since I'm close to, 
have, I'm close to about eight months. But in order for them to sit there, and like I said, I was told that they need money towards getting the option off as well. So I think all together it'd probably be probably close to ten. About ten thousand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I'm trying to figure a way to structure a deal to make this work out so where you, you know, just lose the house and get nothing for it. You know what I mean? Well, what I can do is uh, I can give you the information as quickly as possible. Uh, whether or not you can do anything with it on your part, I can give you the, uh, the loaner that I'm going through through St. John's and I can also uh, find you the account information for the MSC Bank. Do you have personal yeah. information you need? Do you have the most recent mortgage statement for the both of them? Um, I do not currently. Um, that was something that I passed over to uh, John Lynch and his team. And right now it's in, a, it's in a pile. So I don't have it in my possession, but I can sit there and go to my file and find it. But it would take a little bit, like I said. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. We would have to get to it because we would need that information to be able to send over the paperwork to stop the auction so as far as that part like as far as you moving out i mean what would you sell the house for would you sell it for uh what what did you have in mind as far as pricing well that's the thing looking at the area i'm looking at what the houses around are worth and there's been a lot of my neighbors that did a lot of their own uh remodeling to attach that to up their value so i understand that my house is in currently up to date or anything like that um and with the uh tour cops i was thinking if i had to sit there and want the most it would be 60. that was what the original agreement was and that was what i was kind of settled with and what i kind of made plans around but again depending on what you can sit there and offer me i'm willing to negotiate yeah, because I was again what was you know where my my heart was kind of set on and where I was okay with and where you know I'm yeah. like you know I'm, I'm still losing on the actual value of the property based on when it was last estimated, but at the same time I know that since then the, the sewer line, not from the house to the street but from the house to the the back sewer line, right, has been more corroded with uh with, with trees. Yeah. yeah, and that stuff get expensive messing with the sewer line. That can be fifteen thousand dollars. Just that one thing. Well, what my last uh, quote was, and this is about two years ago, it was about five. But then the one that uh, got my other quoted me up there was about seven to ten, depending on where I went. So yeah. your estimate on fifteen is pretty close. Yeah, I've done them before, so they're expensive. Everything's more expensive in twenty twenty four. Yeah, no, I, I definitely understand. And so, honestly, everyone's trying to get paid, so I, I don't blame them at all. I understand, you know, it's a shit job and nobody really wants to do it, but... Yeah. So if there was a way we could structure a deal, I mean, and say say maybe we... And I'm just asking, if we were able to structure a deal to, to get this where it didn't go to sale and say if we can put, I don't know, two or three thousand dollars in your pocket and stop the sale, would that help you out? Uh, two or three thousand dollars in my pocket to stop the sale and, and get rid of the house, like walk away. Is that what what you're talking about, or what what would be so what what is exactly that you're saying? So you stop the sale, but the odds then from the seventeenth on, you and I would continue to do business, get rid of the house, or that would be exactly what I would do to walk away with it. Yeah, just saying walk away, meaning uh, we would stop the sale, uh, buy the house, uh, deal with all the, you know, moving parts, handle all the repairs, maintenance, all the stuff, yeah. you know, coordinate with the banks, whatever we need to do, and put some money in your pocket so that you can be able to move and everything. Would that help you out? That would help me out, but um, my, again, kind of getting further into that, how, what would my time frame uh, to get out be at that point if... If that were the case, that were to take that offer right away, what are we looking out for a vacation? A vacation to be like, um, obviously I've been packing, getting everything ready just because of what's, you know, impending. But yeah. what would my time frame be? That way I have more of an idea and I can, you know, think about how I'm going to use that money to potentially 
find a place or put a down payment on an apartment or, or something. Yeah. So we're really flexible on it. Um, we try to work with you. How much time do you think you need? Well, I mean, the thing was with the original vehicle, it was supposed to about you know, 35, 40 days, you know, the, the usual, you know, month, month and a half, just trying to get everything together and situation, everything cleared out. Um, and honestly, you know, 30 to 35 days would be preferable just because it gives me time to get everything together, uh, everything cleared out, possibly sell some stuff off to get some extra cash to help out with whatever, yeah. wherever I'm going. So it, you're saying basically you could be out by Thanksgiving. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, Thanksgiving, yeah. That would be, that would be pretty much you know, the deadline. I mean, it would definitely give me more than enough time. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think we can do that. That's that's reasonable. I understand moving and all of this stuff is stressful. You know, it, it can really put a toll on people. So you know, we're not trying to create a problem. We really want to help you solve the problem and right. be able to move on and you know get a fresh start. So um, what I need to do, Robert, is I need to get uh, something on paper so that I can get over to the lender so that they can stop this sale possibly. And with it being only about four days away, um, I'm thinking I need to send that over to you today. Is that something I can send over to you uh, via email? It is right now. Unfortunately, I have no way to uh, sign or anything like that. Uh, right now, my computer is working. I don't have the uh, the Wi-Fi available, uh, so I'm not able to get on the internet. I'd have to sit there and go to the library, which is right down the street. Tomorrow morning, I can sit there and take care of it. I do understand time is of the essence. Uh, I'm just kind of letting you know where I am right now. Um, it's at the point to where I've been cutting down a lot of the bills, obviously cable, internet, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Right now I'm, I'm borrowing my neighbor's uh, uh, internet password through my phone. Oh, wow. Just to get that, but... Are you able to use the uh, email on your phone? I can. Uh, uh, <laughs> I can't get on the internet on my phone currently. I can use I can use a little bit of data, but unfortunately, at this point, it's, it's late enough in the uh, the month to where my bill cycle's coming up, and so my my gigs have been used pretty close to my max uh, because I don't have Wi-Fi. I'm not able to piggyback back on it so often. So, so here here's what I'll do, Robert. Are you able to text me your email address? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, text me your email address. I'll get the paperwork drawn up here this evening. And what I'll do, because I'm not that far from you, I can probably just bring it over to you early tomorrow morning because I know we need to get this sent off ASAP because if we delay, they may not stop the sale. Yeah. Which I wish your other person that you were working with had did this already. They should have already stopped the sale, but we can't go back in time. All I can do now is try to pick up the pieces and solve the problem. I was convinced he showed me an email about the person saying, you know, they would be able to stop it and stuff like that. And then after uh, he came by with the contractor, you know, things changed that night. So it was it was kind of a surprise to me or else I would have contacted other people and you know, if I would have known what was actually going on behind the scenes. Like you said, it's, you know, it's fast. That's what we can do about it now. Go ahead and sign that up. Let me just send you my email. Hold on. Um, So those are the, I, I, that's the only thing I would need for right now. One, if you can send me your email address. Uh, and the other two things I would need is if you can get the most recent settlement statement or a screenshot, something showing what the lenders uh, have as far as, um, you know, catching up your payments, things like that. All that'll be on your settlement statement. So it'll be a lot easier just to get it from there versus us trying to remember things and, you know, things like that. Because, uh, I'm, I want to have a problem tomorrow. I guess I can go down to the library and grab the computer and go on the internet, email, find my most uh, recent email, run them and see they've done. Yeah. Give you the information from there. Perfect. Other than that, um, if you can get those two set up, those two statements from MT Bank and St. John, but St. John's not foreclosing, correct? No, St. John's, um, they're, they're not closing at all. Uh, like I said, they're just. They just want the, the 45 that they're looking for. Oh, okay. I'm not worried about them. I'm more so worried trying to make sure that the people who are foreclosing are going to stop that auction. That's who my main focus is right now, which is M&T Bank, correct? Correct. 
Okay, perfect. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, drop the paperwork here tonight. You go ahead and um, if you can get those two settlement statements. Uh, what time in the morning uh, will you be available? Um, so library opens up at about nine. Um, should be able to get there. Should be able to get on the computer. I'd say 10, 10 30. Get a hold of me. Uh, or swing by or just let me know uh, what, what your plans are. I should have the uh, information to you by then. After I, I send my email or something like that. So we have contact. Perfect, perfect. Which uh, library are you going to? Um, Bigger Park. Right by Bigger Park. The one with the bank. Bigger Park. Because I might just be able, to, I might be able to just meet you at the library. That might speed it up. Because I don't want to have a lot of delay in there. I want to go ahead and get this sent in. Because like I said, we only have three business days, basically, if you count tomorrow, um, to get this in. And usually they want anything seven days out. Most banks don't want to work with you if you're not at least seven days out to stop a sale. So we're going to do everything in our end to try to get this stopped and uh, put something in your pocket. Uh, other than that, did you have any other questions for me for right now, Robert? Not right now. Um, like I said, I'll send you my information. Get that uh, drawn up, and um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go from there tomorrow. Okay, I'll get it drawn up here tonight, and I'll have it ready. Um, just let me know when you're going to the library tomorrow. And I, like I said, I might be able to just meet you over there so that we can speed sure. up the process. Sounds good, sir. All right, appreciate it. Have a good night. All right, you too. Bye-bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think about that guy? He's on fire. Can't lie, yeah, Chris, you too, you too cold, bro. But they only give me three days to work with. They got to make me pull a rabbit out of damn hat. <laughs> hey, you too good for it to be a problem. That is true. Too good, no problem, it's a solution. Yeah, I'm gonna send, uh, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and drop a purchase agreement for probably, what do you say, yo? 47. I'm gonna draw my contract for say 50, but it's gonna be 50 sub two. I'm gonna actually draw up two contracts to be honest. One's gonna be a cash deal just to send to the lender, the second's gonna be an actual uh subject to deal for me to take over his payments and catch up his loan. Hey, Chris, is that you? Damn. So I'll have yeah, you option. cold, bro. That's that's the, the play I want to do with that. Then I want to get his settlement statement. And then last and but not least, I want to get an authorization to release information so that I can have him sign that when I meet him tomorrow in real life and actually uh, send that over to the bank so that I can speak on his behalf versus waiting on him. Because as you see, he drags his feet like most people in foreclosure. How do they get to this point? They had their head in the sand already. So we're going to try to help this guy out. It was really good the way that you were able to uh, help him understand time is of the essence. Because I didn't talk to a few sellers and they were like, oh, you know, we'll touch base tomorrow and see how I feel. Maybe I'll let the bank take it. <laughs> you did so good, man. You like, hey, we need to get this done. Like, time is of the essence. And he was like, yeah, I know. He could have did this crap the day I was at his house. That'd have been a lot better. I'd have had a three day, two day head start. When did I go door knocking? Thursday, I think. Was that Thursday? I don't even know what day that was, to be honest. Thursday or Friday, one of them. Man, you're really good at uh, asking the right questions and keeping the conversation going, though. Thank you. Got it. He just sent the email. Yeah, he, he ready to go. Phone. He can sign the damn contract over the phone. He don't need to really see me, but that's fine. With it being such a short notice and them being three miles away, I'll just go meet the guy again. He's going to say, oh, you're the same guy I talked to. I know. I'm everywhere, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if he realized that or not. He might. <laughs> I don't really care, to be honest, at this point. He's getting desperate. But do you like the pivot I put on him? Put two or 3000 in your pocket? Because he was going to get like thirteen, And uh, if you're going to make me work like this, you got to catch it down, homie. I ain't gonna lie. If you can cut that video, uh, like just can you make this recording available? Yeah, it'll be available. Right, you want that phone call or just that's what I really that's what I really want the phone okay, call. Yeah, I, I'll clip that phone call out. Hey Chris, is that you? Man, dude, that's what really been helping me level up with being able to talk to people is like listening to you the way you talk to people and explain everything. So you notice when he asked me also, oh, how much time do I have to move? Well, I'm glad. That's a good question. We're pretty flexible. How much time do you need? You see, I turned it around and made it a question on him. It's never going to come off me. I don't want to be the one deciding this stuff. 
I want them to tell me what they need so I can give them that. Versus I say two weeks. No, oh, I can't get off two weeks. So never mind. You might say something wrong. I versus ask them what you need. Then we'll see what we can do to help you facilitate that thing you just told me you needed. See, it's better positioning versus you trying to know everything. I don't know anything, but I do know to ask the right questions. That's all I want to know. What question should I be asking? I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm just ready to talk to some sellers right now. Mm -hmm. You didn't got motivated off that call, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be more disciplined and consistent anyway, but you know, just hearing you talk to people and realize you know, it ain't it ain't easy because you trained a lot and know a lot and all of that, but you make it seem so easy, you know. <laughs> it's just better to ask questions, figure out what they want, and serve up exactly what they ask for on a platter. That's the that's not even closing. That's just saying, oh, I want a cheeseburger. Here's a cheeseburger. I ain't gonna try to give you a fish sandwich when you say you want a regular old cheeseburger. Give them what they asking for. Yeah, but you definitely just close that dude out for sure from a sales standpoint. Because that dude, I get the feeling no matter what somebody will call and tell him tomorrow, he's going to be like, ah, Chris got me. Yeah. I could tell by the way, yeah, you, you you built all of the credibility and security in his mind already. In his mind, that deal already closed. <clears throat> yeah. I wish I'd have got to him sooner, though, because I don't. this is, like I say, close. The 17th Thursday. You know, when I get this stuff signed off and sent tomorrow, then they got to take a day to scan it in. Then you in a Tuesday, then they say, oh, well, what's this? And, you know, it's just dealing with these banks. And if I knew what it, his pay, he says his arrears is 10,000. I'm really don't, I don't really want to send 10,000 over to catch that up either. What I would like to do in a perfect scenario is one, stop the auction. Two, uh, renegotiate with the bank to get those arrears put on the back of the loan, reinstate the loan, uh, tell them it was a hardship, work with him. You know, because he seems reasonable. And these are the kind of sellers I like where I, they just do what I tell them to do. That's all I need you to do as a seller. Do what I tell you to do and we're going to get you out of here. <laughs> now, when they're giving you pushback and, oh, well, I don't know about that. Man, do what I tell you to do. You already done messed up. And I already seen the house. I've seen the outside of it. I haven't seen inside the house. So it's in the good areas over here. Laura sent Missouri. So we're going to see what goes with that. What up, Justin? I see you sneaked in here in the middle of a call. My favorite part though is how you like transition real smoothly into like the closing call of the working out the terms and everything. Like it's just like a smooth transition. 100. but don't know where to start. Well, what I would say is to join the Future Cash Flow Club. It's a community of investors where we talk about wholesaling, we talk about creative deal structuring, buying houses subject to, all of the creative stuff that everybody's talking about. You don't need a real estate license or any of that. Wow, where do I sign up? Well, I would say go to futurecashflowclub.com. That's futurecashflowclub.com. You can even get a free trial. Try it out today. <laughs> <laughs>